Cascatelli with cauliflower, bacon, and sage. Hi, my name is Dan Pashman, and I am the creator and host of the Sporkful Food Podcast and the inventor of the new pasta shape, Cascatelli. A few years back, I set out on a quest to invent a new pasta shape because I felt that I was dissatisfied with a lot of the pasta shapes out there. Now, I have come up with three criteria that I use to judge all pasta shapes. Ready? Number one, forkability. How easy is it to get the pasta shape on your fork and keep it there? Number two, sauceability. How well does sauce adhere to the shape? Number three, tooth sink ability. That is how satisfying is it to sink your teeth into this pasta shape? I think there's a lot of pasta shapes out there that are good at one or two of these things. Very few nail all three. Everyone I talked to in the pasta industry thought this was a terrible idea. They said, there's no way there's another shape out there. There's already so many. Why don't you go make a tortilla chip? And after three years of setbacks, ups and downs, I came up with a shape called Cascatelli. I'm at Spolini. They're actually making my pasta. Today is the day. This is the pasta machine. The first batch sold out in less than two hours. So we made a whole bunch more. It went completely viral and it culminated with Cascatelli being named one of Time Magazine's best inventions of 2021. It's alive! <laughs> then I saw Rachel cooking with it on our show and I said, well, Rachel, call me. This pasta shape holds sauce. It's incredibly durable and satisfying to bite into. And I think we should cook together. I'm gonna go ahead and get the cascatelli going right here. Can I salt your water for you? Oh, oh please, yes, thank you. Liberally salt your pasta water, yes, guys, because it's an ingredient in marrying the sauce to the pasta. That's exactly right. And then you get that pasta water, which is so crucial, as you well know. It is, Rachel. it is yes. the marriage of the pasta to the sauce or, or any other ingredients you're using. Right, so we get that going. Now, now we get the cauliflower over here. Now chop it all up. And you wanna cut it a little bit on the small side so that it can nestle in with a cascatelli Ice. shape. All right, so we'll do a little drizzle here. Get a little salt going. Mm-hmm. Okay, I love a little pepper. Okay. Throw it in the oven. I like Ooh. this at a nice high heat, gotcha. 450. You get a little char on the cauliflower. Get a little More flavor, more everything. Now we already have our bacon all mm -hmm. set here and we're gonna chop them up a little bit. Mm, our oil's getting too hot. Oh yeah, let's turn Is that down. Is this oil or bacon fat? Oh, so after you cook the bacon. Save the fat. You're gonna reserve some of the fat gotcha. for the sage, okay? So, gotcha. And, the, and you fried your leaves in the, yeah, so, yeah, in we, the fat? We can, yeah, that's right. I'll do that's that right. for you. Yes. You're frying the sage leaves in the bacon fat. Yeah. That's sick. Nice Thank you. one. I appreciate that. So we're, so we're gonna cook that up. And you want it to get a little bit brown. You want it to get a little bit crispy. We got our pasta already cooked. Now, what I want to do, let's get the pasta There's over some right here. here. Right, we're gonna dump it in the pan. Now, mm. oh yeah. Now, look, this is something that my mom does. You know, when you cook pasta in advance, when you're, you know, if you're having company over or whatever it may be, you don't want to, you, you, you want the pasta to be fresh. Right. If you cook pasta and dump it in a colander and it sits in that big mass, oh, it no. keeps cooking. Right. And it turns to mush. Right. No good. No good. Right. No you, bueno. You spread it out on a baking sheet and it mm -hmm. will cool. Right. And then you can heat it to finish it later on when your right. company shows up. We got the pasta here. We can do the bacon. Bacon in. We can do the cauliflower in. Holly in. All right. We're doing some pasta water. Yes, sir. All right. Nice. Oh, yeah. We're gonna do Pecorino Romano. We're gonna do some Parmigiano. Yes, both. Yes, yes, yes. And now, let's put in half of our sage leaves I now. I gotcha. Because we want to get this mixing. And this is, uh, what's that word they use in Italy, Rachel? Manticatura. Yes, manticatura. Yes. It's the marriage of the pasta with the other ingredients. That's right. So a little more pasta water. On this part, you're going to kind of, you know, you learn to eyeball it. You get a little more water, a little more cheese, until it all kind of comes together and clings together. Wait, wait, wait. Let me get the... Oh, let's get the, the nice serving dish. Yeah, yeah. And then tell them the big news. You're working on new shapes, yeah? Yes, the, the, the guys at Spolini and I teamed up to launch two more pasta shapes. These are very obscure Italian shapes. One is called Vesuvio, it's shaped like Mount Vesuvius. It holds tons of stuff inside the so spiral. So of course it, it looks like a volcano. That's right. One we call Quattratini. It's modeled after a shape that they only make in Sicily Four. during Carnival. Yes. But these two shapes are only available through this Folini website. Oh, I, I forgot one part. The uh, the lemon. You want to? Oh add yeah, yeah, yeah. Zest? Hang on, you, hang on, hang on. Can you lemon on. zest me? Yes, I will zest you, baby. <laughs> I'll do some in the middle and some on top. The mm. secret ingredients that really take this dish to the next level are the lemon mm. and the breadcrumbs. Mm. You need the crispy breadcrumbs on top. Yeah, you're gonna get the sage leaves for me. Mm. I'm gonna get the breadcrumbs. 